What's going on? This is JD coming out to another video from Redskins Rant. Hail to the Redskins. Real quickly, follow me on you on uh, Insta uh, Instagram, yeah, Twitter, uh, Redskins Ranter. This video will be about a couple topics. I literally just saw another topic that I'll, I wasn't going to talk about, but I just saw it. So I'll throw that in real quick. So without further ado, here we go. First thing, um, Mason Foster got released. Great. Good. I didn't... He was good for about a year, and for some reason, when we start when we pay linebackers, they just stop working out hard. Zach Martin or Zach Brown was the same thing. Um, he was the same thing, so he wasn't productive. So we got rid of him. Good. Um, let's make sure that that's the status quo. <clears throat> Not going to talk too much about that. I think the reason we did is because I think they're confident in the young linebackers we have. Like we have Ryan Anderson. Um, we have a couple guys here that I don't even think are going to make the team, but Andrew and in car, in car, BJ Blunt, uh, Jordan Bradford, uh, Marquise Flowers, Mason Foster, Sean Deon Hamilton, um, Josh Harvey Clemens, uh, Cole Holcomb, Ryan Kerrigan, Casanova McKenzie, Marcus Smith, and Montez Sweat. So I think in that mix, you're going to find two guys that can handle the middle linebacker spot better than Mason Foster was. So I would guess it's probably going to be Sean Deion Hamilton and either Ryan Anderson, and I think Ryan Anderson, or maybe Cole Holcomb is actually stepping up as a rookie and is showing that he has what it takes. Castle McKenzie is actually a not bad one either. So there's actually is a pretty solid linebacking core here. Not really super elite players, but there's good enough players. Like the ones elite, Montez Sweat and Ryan Kerrigan, those are outside linebackers. So I'm thinking... They have enough on the on the roster. Their thought process is that they can get two guys out of that to be productive middle linebackers. Um, they're uh, drawn Payne, um, Matt Ioannidis, Jonathan Allen. Those guys are going to eat up offensive linemen and take on a lot of double teams, leaving these guys to run free and make tackles. So that, I think that's what their thought process with that. So that part's out of the way. The thing I want to talk about is I need to, I just need to stop doing this, but I like I like listening to anything that has to do with wrestling, even if it's negative. I was listening to um, the Junkies. The Junkies are, if you've never watched them, 106 The Junkies, I will follow them on YouTube so I get videos every now and then. And they always talk so negative about the Redskins. Um, one of them like predicted they were 7-9 and nine last year, and you thought that he predicted, that they, I was like the greatest thing ever, and I'm like, I'm like, no, you, you you predicted a 7-9 record with the assumption that we were going to be healthy all season. We were injured most of the season. We had a four-string quarterback. I'm going to go over this. I know I've gone over this a million times, but it seems not be it seems to be a point that is not like consistently like understood that the Redskins, yes, have been 7-9 the last two seasons. But the season before that, they were um, not 7-9. They were 7-8-1. With a healthy quarterback and healthy everything, and this is like one of the reasons why I don't like Kirk. I'm not gonna get into that, but and we were seven and nine the last two seasons, and we've been snake bitten like really bad. Offensive line injured all over the place. Defensive defense was injured all over the place last year specifically. Uh, and Alex Smith did not play well, and we were on our way. We were, we had six wins before Alex Smith went down. We only had one win after Alex Smith left the game. Left the, was out for the season. Okay. We had six wins before he went out, and we only won one game after that, and we were running away with the division. It wasn't even close. No one was even close. We were light years ahead of the next team in our division. We were going to beat Dallas and Eagles, so on and so forth. Um, so we had a four-string quarterback. We went through um, Alex Smith, and then he broke his leg. Colt McCoy, which I honestly think if we if Colt McCoy would have stayed healthy, we probably could have won enough games to make the wild card. I really do think Colt would have been good enough to win – one or two of those last few games. I think he almost beat the Texans. Let's go, let's go over this. So I'll bring up last year's record schedule real quick. 2018 schedule. Okay, so let me just bring up their schedule last year. So we ended up losing to a handful of teams, but I'll get into that here in a second. So Texans, we almost beat the Texans. There was a pass interference call that was not called. Um, that would have put us in field goal range near the end of the game. And there was a dumb penalty that sustained one of the drives before that, so it would give us more time to sustain the drive. So two two penalties like cost us that game, but Colt almost came in and won us that game. Uh, twenty three to twenty one was the loss. If we hit a full goal at the end, we'd have won. They didn't call pass interference. The NFL came out and said that was pass interference and should have been called. 
and Dustin Hopkins is one of the best kickers in the league, so he would have hit that. So I think we would have won that with Colt, okay? Dallas, come out with Dallas, and we don't actually get our asses kicked against Dallas, um, but we, we Colt gets injured against Dallas as well. Um, and then, so we could, we could have beaten Dallas. I'm not going to sit there and say we, we would have, but we could have beaten Dallas if he'd have been in there. We had to play with Mark Sanchez against the Eagles, and Mark Sanchez wasn't very good. He had about a, one good quarter. And then we played the Giants and Giants. I don't know what happened with the Redskins. The Redskins just gave up and didn't even show up that game. But the next game, we did win against the Jaguars. Now, we won that with a four-string quarterback because we benched Sanchez because he was so bad. Okay, So we're on a four-string quarterback at this point. So I'm just going over quarterbacks right now. I'm not even going over the rest of the positions. We're on a four-string quarterback. We beat the Jaguars 16-13. And then we go and play the Titans. Colt McCoy or Alex Smith would have beaten the Titans. He would have beaten the Titans. We'd have, we should have beaten the Titans. Okay, and then we got shut out in the last game of the season. So alone, there's three game, two games right there that with Colt McCoy or Alex Smith, we would have won. Okay, and I wouldn't be surprised if we if we had um, Alex Smith or Colt the entire. I think I, I want to correct myself. I think Colt got injured right at the beginning of the Eagles game, like right at the beginning. Okay, so I want to make sure I'm correct on that. I want to be wrong, but. Those are games we could have won. I think we would have won Dallas if we'd have had Alex Smith. He runs the offense better. Um, I don't know about the Eagles. I mean, I, it's not a good sample size. We have two games against the Eagles where we had to play third and fourth string quarterbacks. So I'm not going to gauge that. We did destroy the Giants early in the season. Um, at that point, I think the Redskins were just, just like, just their hearts were just out of it because of all the injuries. But there's at least two more games we'd have won, so that would have made us nine and seven. Um, at, so. And I think we'd be the Giants with Colt. So uh, three, uh, 10, and, 10 and 6. We should end up 10 and 6. So just saying. So we got Colt injured. And then we had Sanchez in for like half, uh, maybe a half against the Eagles. And then he got taken out and put in. The place was Josh, Josh Jackson, I think. Josh Johnson. Um, not the greatest quarterback. But I mean, mobile. But he did an adequate job. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, it's fourth string. What are you going to do? And... That's only, I'm not even counting other things right now. So we started the season with our starting quarter running back out. Bears guys is out. Midway through the season, um, Adrian Peterson gets injured. He only played 12 games last year. So he missed four games due to injury. Um, Chris Thompson was out some games. We had to play four string running backs. We had offensive linemen. We started the season not bad. We actually weren't bad. We had Williams, we had Trent Williams, Sheriff, Chase Roulier. I forget who our guard is on the right side. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Trent Williams, um, Sean Laval, Chase Roulier, Sheriff, and then Mosley. Or Moses. Which I hate Moses. I'm not going to get into that, though. So, by the end of the season, almost none of them were playing. Almost none of them were playing. Brandon Sheriff tore something in his chest. He's out for the season. Um, uh, Morgan Moses injured out for the season. Um, Chase Roulier was injured. The whole offensive line got injured. So, we had... Second string offensive lineman, and then we had third string offensive lineman before the end of the season. So we're playing starting NFL teams with you know Super Bowl aspirations and Pro Bowlers and playoff teams, so on and so forth. With and we played all those teams, and we had third string offensive lineman and a four string quarterback and a third string and fourth string running back. And I'm not going to talk about now. I'll talk about the receiving now. Sorry, I'm not, I am going to talk about the receiving because the receiving was atrocious last year. We did not have Paul Richardson. I think he might have played four games last year. Jordan Reed was actually not horribly unhealthy last year, but he did scratch a couple games. The same with uh, Fred, uh, Vernon Davis. So we didn't have our our elite. I will say they're elite. They're elite tight end tandem. Um, we Jordan uh, um, Crow, Jameson Crowder was not available most of the season. He was injured most of the season. Trey Quinn got injured like game one. He, he did something to his ankle. I think he dislocated it or something. So so there's all these things that happen. And with all that shit happening, this man Jay Gruden got us to seven and nine. That's I'm sorry, if we're healthy, that, that we we blow the league out. We blow the we would we have gone eleven and five or twelve and four in our division with none of those injuries. We didn't even have our best running back, and we still had a solid running game. Okay, so now there's a lot of ifs in this. We've been snake bitten with injuries. If we have another year of that many injuries, the entire training staff needs to be fired on the spot. Like it it does. It needs to be fired on the spot. Got got rid of. They need to get got. They need to get got and get out of town. Like seriously, it's that freaking bad. So 
that's that's my take on that. So I heard them talking like, oh, the Redskins are gonna be like three and thirteen. You know how bad a team has to be to be three and thirteen. This is how the Redskins were had a decimated defense two years ago, and we still went seven and nine, and we almost made the playoffs. Still, we only had to do was we lost a game, we lost a couple games that we shouldn't have lost. We shouldn't have lost to the Chiefs if uh, jo- Josh Dawson doesn't uh, doesn't drop a damn pass in the end zone. A touchdown pass in the end zone because he's a pussy. I'm gonna say that. I'll say that he's a pussy. He caught the ball and instead of cradling it and just taking the impact on the ground, he tried to put his arm down to brace himself and he couldn't hang on to the football. Fucking pussy. Sorry. Pardon my language. I don't like to cuss on this. This is. Uh, I want this. I want to be able to watch this, but he's a, a pussy. Okay. I yelled that so much. My my wife, girlfriend at the time, wife now. She like. I was scared because I was yelling so much. I yelled. I never. I yelled that so many times in a matter of like ten minutes. Like I was so upset with that play. Um, there's one or two other games that year we could have won. Uh, this game, there's some stuff in there that we could have won too. Um, was there a game in here we had something like that happen? No. Okay, I'm just making sure. I, I don't. I don't remember if we like had an incident where we had like a pass interference late that cost us game. I know with the Cowboys, they got their drive sustained that gave them the 31 points. Something happened with that. I'm not going to get too much into it. I'm not going to get in the past. Um, so, yeah. So, I don't... To me, um, Jay Gruden is, is is the coach that we need and the coach of our future, by far. It's not going to be a discussion. Like, it shouldn't be a discussion. He shouldn't be having to coach for his job. Whereas, right now, um, it seems like he's coaching for his job. Like, this is his last year. I don't know why that is. He's seven and nine. What level of success have we had as a franchise to sit there and say, "Okay, man, you you've had all these injuries and stuff, and you're only doing seven and nine? Get the hell out of here! What are you talking about?" Like, sir, I, I understand that it kind of dumbs down our, our expectations, but our expectations went from we were like four and four and twelve every year, five and five and eleven every year, and we're getting to seven and nine with third string players and fourth string players. Like, how did you not equate that this guy, if you give him a good team, he's going to freaking do some things? Like, like I, I can't even fathom it. The one year he had everything go his way, he had a quarterback that could not complete a, ball, a, a pass in the red zone. Um, I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to get into it. This is not a Kirk Cousins bashing video. I'm just saying the one year he had a lot of things go his way. His defense was healthy. His offensive line was healthy. All those things happened. He had a quarterback that could not – connect with someone in the end zone and could not complete a pass over 20 yards down the field. I have the statistics. I have a video I did on this this channel where Kirk Cousins was completing like 11% of his passes over 20 yards. And everyone's like, well, that's not a big deal. Like, yeah, it is. The league, the league average is 33 and he's completing 11. That's pretty bad. So we have no vertical game and yet he keeps trying to push the ball down the field. I had a video. I, I, I'm off topic for two seconds. I had a video about where I did went through the entire Eagles game the entire Eagles game, and I counted how many times he missed wide open guys that were like three or four yards down the field on like first or second down, taking a shot deep and wasting downs. The entire game. Okay? I'm off this topic now. I want to get to the main topic of this. Here's my predictions for this season. I think the Redskins are actually do pretty good this year. This year. Um, if they do the things that I expect them to do, that I want them to do, I think we'll have success. I think we're going to have some success. I think we're not going to win the division. Our division has a real one team at, and I hate to say this, I think Dallas, if they put it together right now, they can win the Super Bowl. They have it's a perfect storm. They have a good offensive line, a good defense. A lot of the defensive players are on cheap contracts right now. They have a running back that's on a pretty cheap contract. A quarterback is definitely on a cheap contract. So they have all this stuff all at once. Because after this season, you gotta pay Dak. You gotta pay Amari Cooper. You gotta pay all these players. They're not gonna be able to keep this level of talent. And this is why the Patriots are good every year, because the Patriots will draft and reload when these guys need those big contracts. No other team has been able to do that nearly as well as the Patriots have. So Dallas, and I hate to say it, Dallas, is this is their year if they're going to get a year that gets Super Bowl. I do think we split with them. Um, I would love to see us you know, win the division. It's just going to be tough this year. This is Dallas's year. The Eagles are a downward slump. They're, they're downward slump. Everyone thinks that they're going to win. They have one prediction. Someone says they're going to win the Super Bowl this year. I don't believe that. This is um, Carson Wentz can't stay healthy. You lost your star backup. Um, you don't have a solid running game. You have Jordan Howard, but he just traded for him. Um, you can't keep a running back healthy. You, you're 
don't have good corners, you're there's so there's a lot of things missing on that team that's gonna make them great. Yeah, Jackson's gonna stretch the field for you, but just some things missing on that team that are not gonna Golden Tate was fantastic for you guys last year. I don't know why you didn't resign him. Um so there's here's a prediction that I have for the Redskins. First thing, the Redskins defense is all defense first, not do offense second. Defense, the Redskins defense will be top five a rush or top five run defense this year. They will be top five run defense this year. They last year we played a handful of teams that had the top running backs in the league. Um, I have the schedule right here. Um, we played shit. Oh, sorry. We played the Cardinals first, and they're not a top running team, but David Johnson is a very good running back. He was off an injury, so you can you can make that excuse if you want to. But the Redskins did hold him to. Um, actually, I will bring it up. We held him to very few yards. Very few yards indeed. Packers don't have an elite running game. We did hold them under a lot of yards too. So most of the teams we played last year, um, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm clear and contrite with this. I don't want to be misleading stats. So the Washington Redskins uh, last year, Cardinals. So they held the Cardinals. I mean, David Johnson had 37 rushing yards on nine attempts. It's actually not horrible, but you just gave him the ball more. When you're down, when you're down 21 nothing, they're going to throw the ball more. Um, so we held them to – I'm adding it up here – uh, 61 plus 68 yards rushing. So we crushed that team um, and, and stopped them from running the ball. And then when you look at Indianapolis Colts, um, their running backs, I'm sorry, running back. Their running back, Jordan Wilkes, had 61. So they got just over 100 yards when you combine all of them, but none of the running backs, like, I mean, one of them got over, got 61 yards rushing. Marlon Mack got 34, and some guy and he got seven, and, and Luck got two. So when you combine all that, they got over 100, but that is a game we lost, and they were running the ball late. That is a game where, I mean, we had, we didn't have any rushing in that game. God damn, we had horrible rushing in that game. Um, Green Bay, we had Green Bay, Packers didn't even break 100 yards rushing. Their, Aaron Jones had 42 yards. Williams had 29. I don't know why they didn't run the ball more. All these guys have high averages. I guess we just got a lead early, and... They just they had to throw the keep up with the. I, I'm guessing that's what it is. Saints. I'm pretty sure the Saints did not run a lot on us, but they passed a lot. Uh, I'm looking at all of them right now. I know the I know that we shut down uh, Zeke and Saquon Barkley last year pretty well. It was a pretty amazing feat that we did. Okay, yeah, the the Saints ran all over us. They Ingram got 53, Kamara got 24, Tyson Hill got 23. So they got just oh, they got over 100 yards on us. So. Just over 100 yards. <clears throat> or no, 99. I'm sorry, they had 99 yards on us. So they didn't break 100 yards, but they passed like crazy. Breeze had 363 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, Panthers. We held the Panthers to not a lot. They got 81 yards. 81? Yeah, 81 yards combined. So Newton got 43. McCaffrey got 20. So that happened. Um, I'm not going to go through the rest of the schedule. I'm going through like one more game. Zeke Yoli only got 33 yards on us. Dak got 33, 7. So they didn't, they didn't break 80 yards. So they got 73 yards on us. And then I know we shut down uh, Saquon Barkley the first time we played him. Um, so on and so forth. So we had a solid run defense. The problem with our defense last year, and, and I've said this in another video, is the Redskins outsmarted themselves. The front office really did outsmart themselves. They thought to themselves, hey, we could probably trade and get another elite safety to pair with DJ Swearinger. But the problem with that is, and that's not a horrible idea, it's not a, it's not the worst idea ever, I mean, don't get me wrong. The problem with that is, is as soon as you trade a, you, you trade for another guy, you have to incorporate him in your defense, and then your defense got simplistic after you did that. And your scheme got all messed up because he wasn't picking up the defense, and then the entire defense of scheme fell apart. That's what happened. So I don't think they're going to do that this year. I think the Redskins have learned, from, learned their lesson. And I'm pretty sure it happened in the Falcons game. That's his first game. And that's when we started not doing well at anything. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that, that that happened. So I think the Redskins will have a top five rushing defense this year. Um, dang, I just accidentally clicked on the wrong thing. So just give me one second. Let me get out of this. So that's the first thing. I know the second one. So that's the first uh, first thing is we're going to have a top five rush defense. Second thing, we're going to have a top ten passing defense. Um, we are not, last year we had a decent passing defense, 
Um, but I think it will be better this year with the addition of Landon Collins. We've had some good rookies that we've added. Um, hopefully Quentin Dunbar is healthy. He is actually a very good safety or corner when he's healthy. Josh Norman, um, I think this is his last year with the Redskins. I think they're going to trade him before the beginning of the next season. I kind of hope they trade him now just so we have draft picks and these young guys get some experience. But he is one of the best run support safety or corners there is. So we have a good run support corner, run support safety. Um, I have a prediction that uh, we, overall will be a top three – or no, top, not top three, I'm sorry – Top seven overall defense. This is my prediction. So I think we'll be like top. We'll be like number three rushing defense, and number when it, and passing will be like number eight. So we'll average out, but we'll make top ten, top seven. Okay. Uh, I think Jimmy Moreland, who is our corner that we got out of Richmond, Virginia, or uh, University. I think it's Richmond. Um, I think he will start by the end of the season. I've heard nothing but good things about him from training camp. He's a very good ball hawker. He's not the biggest safety or corner. Um, but he is a very good ball hawking guy. Um, so I predict he will start by the season. He'll probably be our slot corner for a while. And then I think either Norman or Dunbar, one of them is going to get hurt, and he'll they'll move him to that spot. Um, Montez Sweat, his rookie year, will get at least 10 sacks. And Kerrigan will break the Redskins' sack record this year. Um, I think he needs seven and a half or six and a half sacks. I think he'll get it. Um, he'll do. He'll break the Redskins sack record. He'll be our all-time leading sack record until Sweat breaks it or Jonathan Allen breaks it. So that's our my defensive predictions. I think we'll have a solid defense. It will be borderline like elite, like one of the best defenses in the league. Um, I think Minuski is actually a pretty decent defensive coordinator. the The problem is last year, like I said, you had to change your entire scheme because you incorporated a new piece. This is why football is an ultimate. This is why, if you ever read the story of the Redskins scabs, okay, where they brought in a bunch of no names to play whenever there was like a holdout for money in like the 80s, and Joe Gibbs threw together a team, and the, the Cowboys, the entire Cowboys roster came back, or like most of them, I should say, most of them came back, and the Redskins scabs still kicked the shit out of them. Football is an ultimate chemistry game. There are so many moving parts. This is one of the games that requires. The most amount of luck to win, okay? Um, there's a video on Vox that goes over probability and, win, and winning in football and all the other sports. Football is a high degree of luck because, one, there's not a lot of games, and, two, there's a lot of moving parts. You have 22 moving parts on a football field when it comes to the 11 on defense, 11 on offense, so that creates a lot of unpredictable variables that you can't, like, zero out. Basketball is different because in basketball, the same guy can shoot the ball every time, and there's a new shot every 24 seconds. There's a higher, um, um, a higher sample size of like plays, and the same guy can shoot the ball every single time down the court. And that same guy can also impact your defense. Five people, five people, ten variables, and the same guy can shoot all the time. It lowers down the odds of it being luck and more about being skill. So I hope that doesn't like nerd this video up too much. Um, baseball is is similar to that. If the best player in baseball could hit every time. You'd have a higher that then be a higher lesser degree of luck. It'd be more probable towards the um, skill side, but because you have multiple different pitchers and you have uh, multiple different batters that have different skill levels that can hit different pitches, so there's more variables in the game. Basketball has less variables because of the things I just explained. Football will have more variables, so luck luck does play a part in it. So I'm going to switch to the offense side of the ball. O-line will start two rookies for them the season. So we have two rookies in, in Pierce Bocker, or Pierce Bocker, whatever his name is, and Wes Martin. I think both of them before the end of the season will start, whether it's because they are replacing somebody who isn't playing well or because they will start because someone's injured. I'm going to lean, toward the, lean towards the injury side. Um, Redskins don't have a bad offensive line. They haven't had a bad offensive line in years. The problem is we just can't stay healthy. That's the problem. So right now, I think if we start right now, and this is assuming Trent Williams gets his, his crap um, taken care of, um, assuming Trent Williams, we have Trent Williams, and I think Eric Flowers will start at guard. That's what they're trying to do is switch him to guard. Uh, Chase Roulier, Brandon Sheriff, Morgan Mosley. So that's our Morgan Moses. That's our starting offensive line, which is a deep, pretty good offensive line. It's big. It's muscular. They'll move bodies. They have guys that can move and block. And pass blocking and run blocking is going to be pretty solid with that. Um, 
And not to mention, they're practicing against one of the better defensive lines in the league consistently, so they're only going to get better. And even if with injuries in, I think Ross uh, Ross Pierce Blocker will be a pretty good player. Wes Martin will be a pretty good player. So both of them can replace Chase Rullier and uh, Wes Martin, if need be. And you have John Christian can replace Trent Williams. Um, and I don't know the I don't think I don't know the other two well enough to know if they're going to replace the other two. Tony Catalina or whatever. He's not good enough, so I'm hoping that's our offensive line. Okay, so um, if we start Case Keenum from the beginning of the season, we will make the playoffs. Um, on, my, on a video I had prior, I said I think we should start um, Haskins. And from what I've heard, this is just what I'm going off of what I have heard from J.P. Finley, from a whole bunch of other reports out of D.C., is that he, uh, Haskins just isn't ready. He can't, he's not adjusting to the speed. Um, he throws a lot of picks. He does throw some great balls once in a while. But, I mean, he's starting to know our defense. He's going to have a new defense every week. And he's still throwing that stuff. He knows where he shouldn't go with the ball and so on. And not to mention, you have players that are signing off on on, on Keenum right now. <clears throat> so, if we start Keenum, I think we will make the playoffs. Because Keenum, you can say what you want about Case Keenum. He is a veteran. He knows how to play football. He knows um, he, can, he, can, he, can, he can get a lot of touchdowns. He will throw interceptions once in a while um, with a strong offensive line and a good running game. And if our receivers play well, he has proven that with good talent, he can win in the NFL. The time, I, I have faith in him. I think he will do pretty good. I mean, I think he'll get us to the playoffs, maybe about 9 and, nine and 6, 10 and, or 9 and 7, 10 and 6. Something to that degree will be what Case Keenum does. Um, he's proven to be clutch, too. His, his, the Minnesota Miracle, or whatever it's called, hell of a throw. I mean, hell of a throw. To, and he put it on the money. Even if he would have got tackled, he got out of bounds, and still kicked the field goal to win the game. That was a fantastic play. And you can say what you want. That's a fantastic play. And I'll take a guy that has that kind of, uh, whatever you want to call it, balls, whatever, to make those kind of plays. If we start Haskins, we will miss the playoffs. I believe this because if we start Haskins, we're going to lose our first five games. Yeah, he'll probably get a couple wins throughout the middle of the season. Or we're going to at least go one and four. Let me phrase that in our first five games. And he'll win a couple games throughout the middle of the season. In the end of the season, he'll get pummeled because teams have film on him. And we have our toughest teams near the end of the season. Some of the toughest teams near the end of the season. And they'll pummel him. You have teams looking to get good playoff berths. And we're at, we'll be at the point where we have like a four and ten record or something. And we're going to get pummeled. The only... Exception is Jay Gruden is a good coach, so he might find a way to to turn Haskins into just a game manager for this year, and he'll get us like eight and eight and seven and nine. And I think Gruden will lose his job if he doesn't get eight and eight or seven and nine. Um, I don't think Gruden should lose his job. I think he has done very well with what he has to work with. I don't think a lot of other coaches, except for maybe Bill Belichick, could be given a four string quarterback, third string offensive line, third string running backs and still go out there and put on a, com- a, a competitive football put a competitive football team on the field. And a lot of times he'll lose a player and have like three days to prepare and have to go out there and compete again. He lost um, um, he, he lost uh, during the Texan game he lost Alex Smith. We played the Colts that Sunday and then three days later, okay he had to pl- he had to play the Cowboys and Colt McCoy was not horrible in that Cowboys game. Um, so he had to prepare. There's a lot of things he has to prepare for. And then the, the following week, he had to he had to get Sanchez ready to back up. And then the following week after that, and then he put out together two straight weeks with Josh Jackson or Josh Johnson, whatever the name was. And we were competitive for two straight weeks, and then we got blown out by the Eagles because the team basically phoned it in. Um, Reed will – I think this is a bold prediction. This one's bold. Reed will play more than 10 games this year. I, I We didn't trade him. So I'm assuming that that means that the training staff feels he is healthy enough to keep on the staff and that he is going to be good to go for this season. 10 is maybe a soft number, but 10 or more, and I think we'll be fine. 10 or more, we're going to get to those 8 and 8 or 7 and 9 with, with Haskins. 10 or more, we're, Keenum's going to get us to the playoffs. Okay, um, We will have 2,000 yard plus rushing yards total for this team. With the combination of Adrian Peterson, um, Adrian Peterson, Dever- uh, D- uh, Darius Geis, Chris Thompson, and Love out of Stanford, okay, we're we should have p- 
put on 2,000 plus yards of rushing this year with those guys. Okay. Um, I don't think Adrian Peterson is going to get 2,000 yards by himself. It's not going to happen. He's too old. He's going to be splitting too many carries. He'd have to get 50 yards of carry per game or something like something like that. He ain't going to. It ain't going to happen. I'm sorry. Our offensive line's not that good. We have to get the, the greatest offensive line ever amassed. Couldn't get you 2,000 yards. Um, maybe it could. Maybe maybe it could. Um, but it's still not. It's not feasible. I think it's feasible that the whole team could get about 2,000 plus yards. Um, with those four com- combined, and you know, just put all the weapons on the field and see what happens. But I don't see that. I don't see us being able to um, put together two thousand yards for one player, and then everyone else be happy with their numbers. I don't see that happening. And I do I, another prediction. I do think Adrian Peters is going to make a fuss about how many carries he's getting, how many yards he's got by, before the end of the season. Um. So next prediction I have. Come on. There we go. The next question I have is if Colt starts, he will be replaced before game five with Keenum. And we'll miss the play we will miss the playoffs. Um, so those are my predictions. Um, I had one for the best receiver. Uh, I'm not gonna get into that. I, I Jordan Reed should be our best receiver. He's our most talented. Um, if our receivers if we if Paul Richardson's gotta stay healthy, there's a lot of things that have to happen for the Redskins to actually, you know, be very successful this year. Um, that's my video. If you have any comments, questions, statements, attitudes, or beliefs, please comment down in the section below. Follow me on Twitter, Redskin, or, uh, Redskins Ranter. Uh, my name is JD. Hail to the Redskins. See ya.